Hello once again from the Prim Reaper. I want to welcome you to the first video in my Misuse of Words series. The first misused word I'll be covering is racism. This one most definitely seems to be one of the most commonly misused words I see in modern times, so I figured it would be a good place to begin. In addition to that, I have a reasonably recent personal example I can add to the discussion for flavor, so that always helps. I'll be breaking this first one up into two videos to keep it a little bit more manageable for me, the next two weeks are quite busy, and also to keep from dragging on on any one topic for too long. So basically a good place to start when examining words is to look at their history. I was actually a little surprised to learn that the point at which this word entered into common usage wasn't until World War II, 1936 to be exact, prior to which the commonly used word was instead racialism. The basis of these words is relatively simple. When early scientists acknowledged different races among human beings, there were some who believed that some races were inferior and, as a natural consequence, that some races were superior. And therefore, differential treatment between the races could be justified. Of course, this is not to say that racial discrimination hasn't existed for thousands of years before this, but the word itself is surprisingly new. When you or other members of your racial group believe that you are superior to another race, it's striking how many terrible actions can be justified in the name of that. It would make this video far too long to list out every example of racism that I can find from history, but let it be known that it is definitely a worldwide problem that exists across many different kinds of cultures towards all kinds of people. It is certainly not a whites-only sin, unlike some folks would have you believe, but I'll get to that in a moment. I think that when a lot of people envision racism, they're thinking of specifically interracial racism, such as white racism against black people or American racism against the Japanese in World War II. But as I was researching this topic, I was struck by the number of intraracial examples of racism that I could find, such as English settlers considering the Irish lesser humans or tribal warfare between African or Native American tribes. The Rwandan genocide is an especially large and relatively recent example of this. The concept of racism is a much more complex one that a lot of people portray it as. But let's be real, you probably knew all of this. After all, the title of this series is not a history of words, it's the misuse of words. So let's cut to the chase. How is the word racism being misused today? There are two main ways. First, the definition of racism is being altered by people in certain fields with the express purpose of excluding certain races from being victims of racism, often but not always implying that certain other groups of people are actually incapable of being racist due to their quote-unquote lack of power in society. Some people are even going as far now as to say that there actually aren't any racial differences between humans, but I'm not really going to get into that because not only is it patently wrong, but even if there supposedly weren't, we would likely just switch to a term like ethnist or ethnocist to replace it because, hey, whether or not we have races, we still have people attacking other people because of perceived physical or cultural differences, so languishing on that kind of silly point would just waste time. Anyway, the second misuse of the word racism occurs where the term is being broadened not only to include people of varying races or ethnicities, but also people of certain religions. Something we all know, or at least should know, isn't tied to a specific skin color. Both of these misuses are significant and are resulting in different but equally serious problems. For the rest of this video, I will be examining the first of these two misuses. So, just for reference, let's bring up the actual definition of racism. 1. A belief or doctrine that inherent differences among the various human racial groups determine cultural or individual achievement, usually involving the idea that one's own race is superior and has the right to dominate others or that a particular racial group is inferior to the others. Two a policy, system of government, etc., based upon or fostering such a doctrine, discrimination, or three, hatred or intolerance of another race or other races. So I think for most people, the common working definition of racism is actually that third definition. This definition comes from dictionary.com, and usually I feel no need to reference multiple dictionaries for a definition of a word. But just for the sake of argument, I consulted Merriam-Webster as well, and I found another phrasing, racial prejudice or discrimination. I just want to give specific weight to the words prejudice and discrimination. 
To be racist is to hate another person, to be prejudiced against, or to discriminate against another person based on their racial group. Ugh. I lament the fact that this needs to be spelled out so plainly, but there seems to be a semi-recent academic definition that is taking the place of this in some people's minds. I believe this definition spawns primarily from sociological courses, but I have no doubt that other liberal arts courses are parroting the same concept. What new definition am I referring to? The idea that racism equals prejudice plus power. What kind of power? Well, if you attended one of the classes where this definition was touted, you'd be led to believe that it's power that lies square in the hands of the white folk. Now, I'm not quite sure to which power they're referring. Is it the fact that white people are the highest earners in the West? Hmm, nope, that's not it. Is it the fact that white people are given special treatment in job prospects or in school selection processes? Hmm, guess not. Is it the fact that white people are proliferating at an alarming rate and will therefore continue to take more and more resources for themselves at the expense of people of color? Uh, oops, I suppose not. Is it the fact that in the West, white people have more of the top-ranking positions? I suppose that could be part of it. I mean, although probably not for long, white people are still a majority in a lot of Western cultures. But I wonder what the people in top-ranking positions look like in countries in Africa or in Asia. Pick out the average top-floor executive of a Fortune 500 company in Japan, and I'm betting you won't find Snow White appearing from behind the twirly chair. Seems to me like more of a demographic thing rather than a whites trying to hog all the power for themselves thing. So I don't know what power they're talking about exactly, but whites have it, and somehow this position of power makes white folks uniquely capable of racism while simultaneously unable to be victims of racism themselves. Kind of seems like one of those heads I win, tails you lose kind of deals, doesn't it? Anyway, this new definition is resulting in two main things happening. First, white people are being accused of racism much more commonly for the slightest little things. Things that would have been considered social niceties in the past are now being considered microaggressions. Asking someone where they're from or being curious about their culture are viewed as if they're coming from a place of superiority rather than a simple desire to learn more about others. White people are being told that they can't take any fashion cues or celebrate any holidays from other cultures due to cultural appropriation, and yet everyone seems equally free to utilize the societal structures and freedoms in the cultures that have been primarily populated by white people for some time. All the while, we're told that white people somehow have no culture as if entire swaths of people were able to live in a cultural vacuum. People who have had no hand in atrocities such as slavery or the Holocaust are being made to feel guilty over the sins of their ancestors, assuming that they are indeed their ancestors and that the white people in question didn't, in fact, immigrate from an unrelated country long after such atrocities were committed. Even children barely old enough to comprehend racism as a concept are being made to feel guilty for being white in some areas, a concept which just turns my stomach, honestly. Meanwhile, any poor treatment that any white groups may have faced in the past are minimalized because they're not that bad compared to the struggles that people of color have faced. I have an example of this that I came across while looking up information for this video, but I'll save that to the end. The second thing that's happening as a result of this artificial new definition of racism is that some members of minority groups, and I want to stress that this is only a small fraction of minority members, many others are calling this out for the nonsense that it is, feel that they're being given free reign to behave in a completely racist manner towards white people while claiming that they don't have the required power needed to be actually racist. Because, you know, I'm sure the lack of supposed power you possess as you shout for dead cops or proclaim that white lives don't matter somehow makes you less of a jerk, right? The other side to this is that people are claiming that white people cannot be victims of racism, only victims of prejudice or discrimination. As you might recall, the original definition of the word racism means prejudice against or discrimination against a person based on their race, so saying something like this is akin to saying that white people are incapable of catching a cold, they're only able to experience a sore throat, cough, and a stuffy nose. 
It's an entirely pointless distinction meant only to try to minimize the negative experiences of that group, and in a lot of cases, it's unfortunately working. A professor is able to tweet out, all I want for Christmas is white genocide, and yet receive nothing in return but a stern lecture and a finger-waving because he claims he was doing it in a satirical manner. Never mind the fact that in the current oversensitized socio-political climate in universities, you could insert any other race in the equation and people would have been calling for his head on a pike. A group of black youths kidnapped and tortured a mentally ill white man screaming, F white people, and we have people actually wondering whether this qualifies as a hate crime. Oh, but those guys were just dumb kids. And black people can't be racist against white people because they lack the systemic power to do so, right? But then everyone always seems to get mighty quiet when you mention the current treatment of white people in South Africa, where the people in power are primarily, you guessed it, not white. I mean, not that we should even have to go to examples like this to suggest that treating white people poorly solely on the basis of their skin color is a racist thing to do. But that's where the consistent misuse of the word has brought us. We have people making racist, generalizing statements about an entire race, claiming that to be born that race is to be born a racist, all the while saying that they themselves can't be racist. It's very confusing. On top of this, it's a highly toxic mindset. Why would anyone want to believe stuff like this? I honestly feel that anyone who could seriously believe that all white people are racist is obviously ignorant to the real horrors of racism. And I'm pretty sure this ignorance is in part due to the way the word racism is being misused these days. When someone is told over and over that someone claiming they're colorblind actually means they're a horrible racist, rather than simply being someone who prefers to treat people equally regardless of the color of their skin, it's unsurprising that they may grow to forget the seriousness the term once held. Now, before I end this video, I want to talk about the example I found that provided a great example of all these things wrapped up into one. While I was researching examples of racism, I came across a Wikipedia page titled The Irish Slave Myth. What is this page talking about? The notion that the discussion of Irish indentured servitude is only a conflation with the African slave trade meant to undermine their history and demands for reparation. Now, sure, it's entirely true that it's insensitive to bring up Irish indentured servitude as though it's a trump card that can be played every time someone brings up racism, and it's true that many of the Irish in these positions entered into them willingly, meaning that they were not in the same position as black slaves. But it's nevertheless odd to me that, of all the different groups throughout the world that face slavery or indentured servitude or anything of that nature, People get their hackles up when issues against white people are brought up, saying, you're only saying that to dismiss black issues, or, yeah, but that wasn't nearly so bad, so why even bring it up? For Pete's sake, can we not just have one moment to acknowledge that white people have some unfortunate slights against them in history as well? Sure, what black slaves went through was horrible, and nobody should have to face that kind of treatment. But I'm pretty darn sure it was no picnic for the Irish to be considered lesser humans by the English settlers. If my fingers were cut off and someone said to me, Quit your belly aching. That guy over there had his whole arm cut off, so you got lucky in comparison. It's not going to magically take my pain away. Someone's always going to have it worse. Unlike what those climbing the victim totem pole would have you believe, it's not a race to the top of the shit heap to see who has it worst. It's perfectly okay to acknowledge that Group 1 went through a bad thing, and Group 2 also went through a bad thing. I promise, acknowledging that a white group suffered does not somehow erase the suffering of other groups. I mean, damn, if you really insist on pulling the whole, the Irish didn't have it as bad as the black slaves, so it's not as big of a deal, then I think it's perfectly safe to say that a reasonably well-off university student whining about studying white philosophers and authors has it a fair bit better than an Irish indentured servant. So checkmate? I feel the need to stress, and again, it's a shame that I need to say this that I hold nothing against any other races or what they have historically been through, and that I would never think to blame these issues on an entire other racial group. 
This is the fault of the authoritarian left festering in our education systems. No matter how messed up things get in this regard, I will continue my policy of treating people with equal respect no matter what, because I was raised with the golden rule and I think that that should really be the policy we all go by. But it's amazing how many people have forgotten that in favor of ideological pissing matches. Treating white people as though they can't be victims of racism and giving all other races a free pass to express legitimately bigoted views against white people is actually causing a rise in white supremacists. It is actually causing people to feel perfectly free and almost justified in expressing racist views against minorities in return. And this is a terrible consequence. I say again, People are beginning to feel comfortable identifying as racist in public. Because in some people's minds, if simply commenting on the racism against whites is an example of white supremacy, then why not just go all the way because it's going to get them the same amount of crap from people either way. This is a problem, and I can only see it getting worse as long as people keep misusing the term racism. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. I will work on the other half of the misuse of the word racism, and I'll try to have it out as soon as possible. But before I cut this off, I want to mention something that we talked about last week on the Honey Badger radio show that I feel is very important. The Canadian Association for Equality is attempting to raise money for a center for men and families in Ottawa. This is a really important cause, and they seem to be having a lot of support and a surprisingly small amount of backlash in attempting to get this center funded and built. I'll be linking the GoFundMe link in the low bar so that you can check out the video that they have there. For the first little while, donations will be matched, so it's definitely important that they get anything that they can. I understand that it's hard for a lot of people right now to find the money to donate to things like this, but if you can, I'm sure that they would really appreciate it and it's going to a wonderful cause. Also, please consider going and checking out the discussion on Honey Badger Radio, as that was also equally enlightening and will help to explain a bit more of what they're doing. As always, I really appreciate all of your support and comments on my videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one.